people joining us. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to uh, Tools Tech Tools and Techniques Thursday on Facebook Live at my sewing room. Uh, I am the infamous Leah. I hang out on uh, online in classes, on Facebook Live, all sorts of good places. Um, if you've been into the store here, you might know that I wear other hats besides teaching and being on camera now and then. Um, so today we are going to be talking uh, about a question that came up in our fan mail um, that needed more than than a quick answer in in a Friday afternoon fan mail class or fan mail presentation. Uh, so this was a question that came in on fan mail is needles, thread, fabric, like how do I know what goes with what? There's a lot of thing. There's a lot of threads out there. There's a lot of needles out there. How do I know um, what do I need to be using and when? So a part of my other duties around here, I am a service tech. Um, I've been teching here at the store for um, about eight years. Um, went from, you know, brand new tech who had no idea what they were doing at the very beginning to a uh, very thorough manual reader, <laughs> and um, I am I am the service department manager. So uh, not teching a whole bunch these days, but uh, keeping keeping our tech team uh, moving and answering questions where I can and lots of times answering uh, technical questions uh, for users out in the store or over over the internet in all the different ways, whether that's email, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube questions, um, you know, all those places. So we're gonna be talking about thread and needles and fabric today and how they can start to play together um, and what you need to know um, to have success with the above. Um, all of these things, um, I could probably talk for three hours individually on each topic um, or longer, um, but we're gonna do the kind of the basics of what you need to know uh, for for home sewing machine use of these things today. That's the game plan. Um, so first up, um, we are gonna talk about needles first uh, because needles are very logical, they make sense. Um, we carry uh, Schmetz and Bernina needles as our main domestic sewing machine needles. We also have some organ needles in store. Um, they hide out back by our service department usually. And then we also carry needles for industrial machines. So one of my very favorite things that I have in the building, I'm gonna take all its extras off. Um, every, every once in a while we get uh, demonstration needles from Schmetz. Um, these are my favorite things ever. Uh, I have been told more than once that I'm not allowed to sword fight with them. However, I have enough for three people to sword fight with them now, and we have refrained. So we're going to talk about the parts of a needle and show you what kind of information you need to know and what makes a needle different than the next one on the shelf. So first things first, this one is way bigger than what you're using on uh, your home sewing machine, but depending what kind of weird industrial thing might be going out on and out in the world there might be industrial needles this big for big industrial applications just think about that um so main things you need to know about the needle most of your home sewing machine needles have a flat back so there's a nice flat side to that and that's going to distinguish the front and the back uh, part on this needle and the parts of your needle this is the top part it's the part that goes in your machine. And normally I have another piece of paper with me here, but I don't right now. The middle part is called the shaft. We have the tip and the eye is where the thread goes through. Um, there's also a groove in the front of the needle. That'll be really super hard to see on camera, but there is a groove. So right there, I'm gonna stick my finger in there. It's too shiny, but all of those things um, help determine what characteristics this needle has, and they vary from needle type to needle type. So the big thing to know first up is one of the, there's a whole bunch of numbers on most needle packages. Uh, some of them are more relevant to you than others. So we're gonna talk about the one that's super relevant first, and then we'll go from there. So this is a universal needle package from Bernina. But the big number that matters here, 130705H indicates that this is a domestic needle. 
So this is a needle classification system for, in the great big world of thousands and thousands of uh, types of industrial needles. This just means this works on your general home sewing machine. So that 13705H should be there. It's not, but it's the industrial classification for your needle. Um, the other numbers that are on your needles will be something like 80 slash 10, which will indicate the size, and there might be letters on there that are going to indicate the type. So let's talk about size of needles and how you get there. So on your needle, oh, we're going to go back to the other camera. It's going to be very chaotic back and forth with cameras today. That's my game plan. So on our needle, this part through here, the shaft of the needle, is what determines the size of the needle. In the metric system, the size 100 needle is one millimeter across through here. So if I probably have a size 100 needle down here. So size 100 needle, you could get out calipers and measure, they'll be one millimeter across. That's, that's the big defining characteristic. A one millimeter across can have a pretty big eye in it. it it'll have a pretty big eye. Um, I size 110 needle will be 1.1 millimeters. A size 90 will be 0.9. So needles make perfect sense. The smaller the number, the smaller the needle. The bigger the number, the bigger the needle. Um, the other things that are going to change as you change the size of the needle, um, the size of the eye will change. And the size of the groove in the front of the needle can change. So what we're looking for long term when you're picking a needle to go with your thread. I have, I have thread that's not thread. I managed to find a rope just the size that fits perfectly. In my big industrial needle. So in an ideal setup, that groove in the front of the needle, the thread will fit nice and snug in there. Not that most of us can see this on our little one millimeter size machines. So thread is sitting nice and tight in that groove. So talk about this again when we have some thread in the mix. But ideally, that thread fits in nicely and that keeps the thread um, tucked in the needle as it goes through your fabric. That's really important for when you make your stitch. If your thread is too big to sit in there, it'll probably be too big to go through the eye of the needle as well. And then you will have nothing but problems and probably a whole lot of shredded thread. So um, you can use a needle that's too small for the thread, definitely an issue. Um, yeah, this is this is the best needle to thread, let me tell you. Um, the other thing that happens is if your thread is too small and it doesn't sit in the groove nicely, then you get some weird stuff happening where it just like flops around and doesn't land where it needs to. So big, when we get, we'll talk about thread. But that's roughly what you're looking at for sizing of needles. Size 100 or 16, if you're using the other classification system, doesn't matter which size range, you know, they're all marked with two, um, is one millimeter across. It's usually a bigger needle than you need for a lot of things, but there is times where it will be the right answer. So that's the groove and the eye are part of, part of your whole needle setup. The other thing that changes is the tip of the needle. So the tip of the needle will determine kind of how pointy or sharp it is. And that's going to play into more what type of needle it is and what type of fabric it's going to be happy playing with. So most of us are familiar with a universal needle. A universal needle is a jack of all trades, um, probably a master of none. There's always, almost always a better needle for what you're trying to do. Um, but if you have no idea what kind of sewing you're going to do, I'm going to sell you a universal needle. That's it's usually a pretty safe bet. <laughs> Probably going to sell you a size 9014 or 8012 if I know roughly what thread you're going to be running. But but knowing exactly what you're stitching will help with getting the right tip on your needle so that it behaves nicely. So the tips of these needles are, uh, this would be like a universal tip where it's not super pointy, but it's not super dull. 
It's a little bit rounded, but not super rounded. Um, the easiest way to think about this is to compare a universal tip with something that at least a few of us are familiar with, and that would be um, knitting needles. So knitting needles are super, super rounded on the end, and that's so they can go through um, your yarn without, without piercing and stabbing. They wiggle their way through. So the biggest difference between kind of your everyday universal, most of the needles and a small selection of your needles is this tip. So we're going to talk about knit fabrics first because their needle selection is a whole lot smaller and then we'll talk about all the other needles available. So if you're working with knits, you need a more ball pointed needle. So this would be, they might be called ball point, they might be called jersey, they might be called stretch. So jersey, jersey is like t-shirt kind of knit, so not super duper elastic-y, but a little bit, definitely a knit structure to the fabric. Um, Whereas a stretch needle is really designed to start going through things with like spandex and elastic and things that are really, really, really stretchy. So it gets more ballpoint as you go. Um, so ballpoint, I could, I could easily take this giant knitting needle of a ballpoint needle and not damage my sweater and not snag it and not tear it. So first fabric to worry about all the time. So making sure that you're sewing your knits with a ballpoint needle because You've had a run in stockings, you've had a run in a cardigan, you've had a run in a sweater. Um, it's no fun. Knits don't like sharp things. They like, they like gentle ball points. So step one, jersey and stretch needles. Um, light ball point, medium ball point for your knits. Depends how stretchy they are, how much of a ball point you need. Um, they don't all come in all the sizes. So you have less size options when you get into those. And usually there's a choice of 7511 or 9014 in those ballpoint needles. And that'll sew through most of your regular um, all-purpose polyester kind of weight threads. 50 weight. So knits get their own category of needles. <laughs> the ballpoint needles. The other end of the spectrum... Um, is somewhere in here. But really, I think my needle rack holds like 80 different kinds of needles or more. So there's a lot of options out there. How are you going to narrow it down from there? Um, Universal is going to be kind of a jack of all trades. Another one that is super, super common that people ask for is a jeans needle. So you need to hem your jeans. Um, you're sewing with a heavy, tightly woven fabric. Um, the twill weave in the denim, canvas, those sorts of fabrics, they're going to like a jeans needle, which is going to have a sharper tip and a little bit deeper groove for that thread to sit in so it goes through really cleanly. Um, other specialty fabrics like uh, batiks or silks or satins, um, something that's densely woven but quite thin, um, you need a sharp needle to get through those really tight weaves. So the needle might be called a sharp needle. It might be called a microtex. So microtex would be um, a great one to have in your arsenal if you're doing um, some decorative decorative wear. So microtex, really fine, sharp tip. Whereas jeans, a little bit, little bit heftier tip on it. Kind of making sense? The downside to teaching this Virtually, <laughs> so I can't see your reactions out there. So jeans and microtex, similar, similar properties, but not quite the same. Um, other things that we have, uh, quilting needles. They have a really deep groove in them. They're designed to go through a quilt sandwich. So this would be your top layer of fabric that's all beautifully pieced, your batting layer, and your backing. That's their job. They're designed to go through all those grippy, grabby um, layers that are in a quilt top. Uh, leather needles, uh, these are fun to look up at super high magnification. They actually have a blade on either side of the tip to cut through leather. Um, so one question that sometimes comes through our door is, oh, I'm sewing this really, really heavy stuff. I need a leather needle. And as much as, yes, you might think that a leather needle is the right answer, 
Um, leather needles, not usually the right answer unless you're actually trying to pierce through and cut leather. Um, those little blades going through fabric are going to cut your fibers in your fabric. And then you will have fabric that is fraying, which is not ideal. So um, leather needles stick with just leather in that case. That covers most of like your fabric's either woven in one of those categories or it's knit. That's where your fabrics fall. Um, there's many more types of needles. What else do I have on the table? <laughs> talked about quilting, talked about jersey, talked about universal. Uh, there is things like uh, non-stick needles and super non-stick needles. Uh, there's lots more needle options than there were um, when I started here. It's been lots of fun having all the new things show up. Uh, super non-stick needles. Are you going through a fabric that's very sticky like vinyl? Um, sticky, grippy, grabby. Um, it wants to ride up your needle as, it, as you sew through it. Um, do you have a lot of glue in the layers that you're sewing together? Like uh, fusible products to hold your layers together. Or using a adhesive spray to keep your project together. Uh, Non-stick needles are good for all those things. They will keep they will keep everything sliding smoothly, which is lovely. So more sticky fabrics uh, might want those non-stick needles. Those are the major types of needles for more specific fabrics. Then we get to talk about the specialty needles for specialty thread, which are kind of in their own little category of weirdness. Um, but once you understand what you're looking for, it's not so bad. Um, so things that would fall into that category. I definitely grabbed some. Where are they? Um, that would be one and this would be one. Talk about this one first. So doesn't matter what you're sewing the moment you, whether you're sewing a woven or a knit, if you're working with metallic thread that has personality like metallic thread, uh, you might need a metallic needle. So the big difference here is the eye is much longer, which is more gentle on the thread than your standard uh, sewing needle. So it'll have space for that thread with lots of um, memory to go through smoothly. So big long eye in your metallic needles. And another specialty one that matters more with your thread is top stitch needles. They also have great big massive eyes in them to accommodate great big massive top stitching thread. So these are uh, very similar in lots of ways. They do have their job specific to the thread that you're trying to use. So not necessarily needing to match these to your fabric, but you are needing to match them to your thread. There's a lot of information here, I know. Um, the last one, which theoretically I have on the table. I made myself a very messy selection of needles. Um, embroidery needles. There's also embroidery needles from both, um, both brands. The embroidery needles um, are a light ballpoint so that you don't um, break previous stitches that you did in embroidery. Um, and they've got a little bit longer eye than a universal. And a little bit bigger eye than what you'd get in a um, in a knit needle is essentially that. So embroidery needles for embroidery or decorative stitches. So sometimes you need to match your needle to your fabric. You always need to match the needle size to the thread you're working with. That's the big thing to keep in mind. Regular size thread needs a regular size needle. Really big fat thread needs a big eye through the needle to move smoothly. So that's the overview of needles. I'm just gonna pop up onto the web here for just a moment. I did that in the wrong order so you guys see that. Um, if you want more detailed close-up photos of needles and to see the differences between the needle brands uh, or needle sizes more 
closely and, and want to see some of the differences up close. Uh, Schmetz has some wonderful um, detailed images and photos on their website, which is schmetzneedles.com. You can look up domestic um, sewing machine needles. But the nice thing here, um, for your reference, if you if you don't have a copy of this elsewhere, um, Schmetz and Bernina have moved to color coding their needles so that you can keep track of what they are without trying to read the tiny little number that's stamped on them. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I can still read the stamped numbers most of the time if the lighting is good, <laughs> but I know that many, many people can't read the number stamped on your needle, so you'll have no idea what size of needle is coming out of your machine um, when you pull it out. So if you are buying Schmetz or Bernina needles, um, keep track of the color coding that is related to that package of, of needles because it will let you know what type of needle it is and what size it is. So on Schmetz, the top band will give you the type and the bottom band will give you the size. And then when you pull it out, you look at the two colored bands and you're like, oh, this is a 9014 quilting needle. I know exactly what I left in my machine last time I was sewing. Um, and when your tech asks you what needle you're using because you're having trouble, um, or they're looking at your machine because you're struggling to have something turn out the way you want, this is how you figure it out. It's lovely. Not If you have older packages of needles, unfortunately, they're not the same. So that fancy little chart is available from Schmetz. And if you poke through their website, there's some really, really cool high magnification photos of needles, which the nerd in me loves so much. <laughs> okay, so needles. Mostly we're matching the type of needle to our fabric, unless we're using specialty thread, and find the right needle for your fabric is the first step to success. Um, symptoms of the wrong needle in your fabric might be skip stitches. That would be a really, really obvious symptom that you don't have the right needle for what you're doing. If you're sewing knits with the wrong type of needle, high likelihood you'll have skip stitches and it's no fun. No fun whatsoever. Um, symptoms that you have the wrong size of needle are a little less obvious. Um, the biggest one being uh, shredded thread is often an indicator that your needle's too small if it's happening with a brand new needle. So the test for figuring out which size of thread you need for your needle to see if it's going to be a good fit. I'm going to thread my, my wonky weird giant needle here with my rope. If you hold the thread at a 45, your needle should slide up and down really, really smoothly. And this should happen on a small scale with your, with your small thread and your small needle. And if your thread is not moving smoothly, it's a very good indicator that the needle size is not appropriate for the thread you're using. So go up a needle size. That 0.9 of a mil like 0.1 of a millimeter can make a massive difference when we're talking the scale the thread is. So it does make a difference lots of times to just go up one needle size. Uh, there is situations where you have really, really big thread and the manufacturer will actually tell you what size of needle it will need. There is threads. There are threads out on the market. Um, I don't know if they're in my bucket right now. Maybe that will tell you something like top stitch 9014. So um, you can trust any random person making a video on the internet for what size of needle you should use with particular thread. But your best option for figuring out what thread to what needle to use with a certain thread if you're having trouble is to go back to the thread manufacturer itself and look at their details on their thread. So let's talk thread. Um, we did talk thread a little bit a few weeks ago on a two for Tuesday with um, Chelsea and Tyler. They broke thread. It was a riot. It was lots of fun. Um, thread, unfortunately, unlike unlike needles, um, is not as logical and not super standardized across the industry. So um, every brand has their own, their own internal method of giving their thread a weight 
um, that is not exactly standardized across the industry. Something across a single brand is fairly logical and consistent, uh, brand to brand, not so much. So keep that in mind. Um, generally, domestic threat is, is measured in weights. And generally, a 50 weight is um, a standard all-purpose kind of thread. So it could be made out of cotton, polyester, rayon, a blend of fibers, something in that realm. Um, but 50 weight is generally pretty content to be your standard sewing thread for most of your projects. Um, generally, those 50 weight threads, pretty happy in a 9014 needle and pretty happy in an 8012 needle. Um, there's not, it's a small difference between those two sizes. So the needle does need to make a big enough hole to leave that thread space to breathe and stitch. Um, and both those needles should do the trick with most of those regular um, domestic weight threads. So when you go down in weight from there, your threads get fatter. Thread is completely backwards to everything else we know in life. So a 12 weight thread is big fat thread in comparison to your um, 50 weight. Got too many things on the table. It'd be fun to put it all away. <laughs> So that's a 50 weight, you can see, no, that's, no, this is a 12 weight thread. Where did the 50 weight go? And then 50 weight. So 50 weight, standard sewing thread, 12 weight, very, very thick. Backwards to everything you know in life. It's just, just something we have to deal with. Um, something this thick will, something like a 12 weight is going to be about as thick of thread as you can put through your machine. Um, this particular thread um, would be pretty happy in a, a top stitch needle. So a top stitch needle has the biggest eye available and probably not a small top stitch needle, probably like 116, a big top stitch needle with a big, big eye to fit that fat thread. So the fatter the thread, the bigger the needle size you need. You can physically see which which threads are fat and which aren't. So somewhere between this and our regular weight, uh, something like the signature uh, cotton thread is a 40 weight. Um, the signature thread is one that actually says on our rack from the manufacturer, 9014 top stitch needle. So those are those are good indicators that that's going to be successful. If the thread company says this is how you should use their thread, um, I would listen to them. They've done some research. They would like you to have success with their thread. Um, other things in that fatter than standard, so lower numbers, um, our embroidery threads for the most part are 40 weights. So that would be this one and this one. Oh, we'll talk about that one later. And this one, this one. So we've got some isocord, some poly sheen, some sulky rayon, some brother embroidery thread. Those are all 40 weight threads. And they're, again, um, usually pretty shiny, pretty, pretty content. 9014, 8012. Um, some of the embroidery needles, because they have a little bit bigger eye in them, um, some of the embroidery needles are 7511 and they'll still work quite happily with these 40 weight threads. So, embroidery weight. Our standard sewing weight would be this one, this one. This is a cotton Presentia Metler Metro Scene, Wonderfill Designer. Wonderful confetti. Those fall into 50 weight category. Roughly, roughly all the same there. For weight, again, size 8012, size 9014. Pick the needle based on your fabric. So you might need a ballpoint needle if you're sewing with this thread and a knit. That's where we're going with this. 
So that gets us into that category. Um, going down in size, up in number. Uh, if you're getting bobbin thread for embroidery, usually it is thinner. And we're not worried about putting this through the needle, but for frame of reference, these are roughly a size 60. And in an embroidery standpoint, that helps the thread wrap to the back and keeps your embroidery flatter. Um, these would these could run in a smaller needle if you were running them through the needle, but neither of these bobbin threads is generally they're not the prettiest. They're like really functional, but they're not pretty for on top of things. So we save those for mostly on our bobbins when they're called bobbin thread. Doesn't mean you can't use them, it's just we don't usually. Um, going down from there, even thinner, we get into, where's the other one that I had? That's not the one I was thinking. Oh, there they went. So even thinner in the lineup, um, we've got threads like uh, Deco Bob, which is an 80 weight and Invisifil, which is 100. Um, these are often just used as bobbin thread, but you can totally put them through the eye of a needle. But these threads are very, very, very thin. They're going to be pretty miserable if the needle they're in is too big because the thread will just flop around. It won't stay tight in the groove in the front of the needle. Um, so these, if you do have to actually stitch with them, these might be a 70-10, 80-12 kind of um, scenario. But again, it depends what you're doing and what the end game is. Um, I know from experience sewing with both of those, they are happy to stitch in an 80-12, um, but they fall into the specialty category, so you'll need to do things like slow your machine down, and it will be happier. Um, thinner threads will need their own little bit of care, but you can use a thinner needle, so you can do that. Now, that covers your kind of normal weight threads. I still have uh, at least eight threads over here that fall into specialty thread category that need specialty care. So it doesn't matter what type of fabric you're sewing, uh, this set of threads is more imperative that we um, buy, find the right needle for its job. So in threads that will be happiest with a metallic needle, I'm going to move a whole bunch of stuff out of the way. Metallic threads are lots of fun. So metallic threads come in a variety of metallic finishes. Um, we've got everything from the super flat, things like hollow shimmer from Selkie, um, to more standard uh, embroidery weight. There's, most of these are 40 weight, but they all look wildly different. Um, this particular metallic is called uh, Spotlight. It's from Wonderfell. Uh, we have silky metallics both variegated and non-variegated. And hologram from Wonderfill is similar to hollow shimmer. So all of these threads, as well as glow-in-the-dark thread from the Silky, Wonderfill, and Isochord. We have three options for glow-in-the-dark thread. Um, all of these threads have a lot of personality and a lot of memory in them. So it's way more important that you pick a metallic needle for success with these threads than picking the right needle for your fabric. Usually you're doing decorative things with these and not doing construction because um, they're also a little more brittle. So metallic needle with your metallic threads. That's a pretty happy situation. And then, like I said, there's a couple out on the table here that are going to be happiest in with a top stitch needle. Um, so Glamour from Wonderfill would be one of those. Pretty happy in a great big honking top stitch needle. And the Sulky, quite happy in a top stitch needle. Or not the Sulky, the Signature Quilting Cotton. Um, D-Twist from Wonderfill. Super cool thread, happier in a top stitch needle. So there's there's many, many options in there. And the one I forgot about, 
uh, but in whole weight thread. So this is um, it's called cordonné, which is the French word for essentially top stitch in the sewing world. Uh, this will be happiest in a top stitch thread. So those are those are roughly how you marry threads and needles. So signs and symptoms that you don't have the right combination. Uh, skip stitches. You might have the wrong needle type for your fabric. You might also have the wrong needle size. If you're already in the right type, you might have the wrong size. Um, the smaller the needle, the more likely you are to have skip stitches because they're just they're just bendier. Um, is kind of the biggest issue. Is really small needles are much more flexible than a big honkin size 100 needle. Um, my big industrial needle, not bendy at all. Probably won't have many skip stitches with this, but it'll also leave giant holes in my fabric. Um, if your stitch, instead of being a straight stitch that looks straight, looks a little lopsided like this, or a little lopsided like this, could be your needle's too small and it's not leaving a big enough hole for your thread to fit. Um, if you are having a lot of shredded thread and uh, broken thread, either you need a new needle or you need a bigger needle. Um, shredded thread will happen over time in the length span of a needle. Um, as the finish on the needle wears off, it will wear more on the thread. So your needles don't last forever. I know this is a very sad situation to hear. Um, regular sewing needle lasts about eight hours of sewing time. Um, eight hours of sewing time, if you sit down in peace, like sit and stitch for eight hours straight, um, is a ton of sewing. Um, eight hours in my sewing room is not eight hours of sewing time because I watch garbage on the internet, I pet my cat, I go find snacks for my kids, I change thread on my other machine, I cut some fabric, I iron some fabric, and I only sew about three minutes. So eight hours is piecing a whole quilt top together, um, maybe quilting a whole small quilt top. Um, if you're talking embroidery wise, you might be able to run 80,000 to 100,000 stitches of embroidery um, on a single needle. But the moment you start getting shredded thread, snapped thread, any weird sounds like plinking, plunking, it's time to change your needle. Either you've um, bent the tip of the needle or you've started to get wear through the eye. Um, that's just gonna pull and shred that thread as you go. Those are all things to keep in mind. Uh, one more thing to keep in mind, um, as the resident service tech on camera today, um, there are some specialty finishes on needles. Uh, one of them out there is called titanium. And some needles are designed to last three times longer than a regular needle. Um, they're not generally your friends because they are not designed to break. So a uh, standard needle is designed to break when it bends 11 degrees, and that is to protect your machine. Um, I would much rather break a needle that's going to cost me a dollar or a dollar fifty and not have to spend $500 in the repair shop getting my needle bar reassembled from all that force going up through the head of my machine or down through the hook system. So uh, needles that are designed to last way longer uh, have a tendency not to break and to um, bend, which all that force that your machine has has got to go somewhere. Um, better to shatter a needle than to bend it. So this was a needle that, um, I don't know what machine we pulled this out of, but this is a titanium needle that bent when it should have broken because it should break when things go wrong to protect your machine. Um, this one fish hooked. Not happy scenario in your machine. Another one. Uh, that one's not too bad. I don't know why I have that one. I had, I had more, but it's been a while since I had them out. So, um, that is one type of finish. Like the last way longer is not your friend. They're about three times the price. They last about three times longer, but they could potentially be a very expensive thing to go wrong if they don't break when they need to. Um, the other finish that's out there is called Chrome. And from a technical standpoint, they look nearly identical. However, the Chrome needles are designed to be non-stick. So if you're using glue, if you're using something like a 505 adhesive spray, um, 
the chrome finish is just going to keep everything non-sticky. So there's regular versions of most of the Schmatz needles as well as a chrome version. So if you know your project's going to have some chrome, you can find the chrome version of the needle type and size that you need. So this is a chrome Microtex 7010, universal chrome 116. So chrome, great. Love the chrome. Not a fan of titanium if they're designed not to break. There's some titanium that are just, they're still going to break. Um, you do have to read the packaging though um, when you're picking your um, titanium needles, please. Keep that in mind. Um, if you're not sure, ask away. So I hope that gives you some understanding of needles, thread, fabric, how they're all going to play together. It's a lot of information. Have I talked for 45 minutes about needles and thread? I have. <laughs> I haven't talked about anything else yet. No. I just saw it. Okay. So, uh, unrelated to needles and thread, let's let's change gears. I have a little bit more stuff behind me before I leave you guys today. Um, there's some cute new fabric. And I totally knew the name. It's called Sewing Room, right? Yeah. The fabric behind me is called Sewing Room. It's adorable. And you have another one. And I have another one. I have a new bunch of batiks. They're on, they're on a cart that doesn't want to come into frame. More new batiks in store. These are artisan batiks. The Prisma dies. They're pretty. This one is my favorite batik ever. Licorice. It's like perfect, almost black. Almost black, almost navy. I love it. I've used it in a couple projects. It's always good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that almost. I've <laughs> almost as much of that as I have Kona Black in my house. Okay, other things going on. If you happen to own one of these, because it is a lovely reference book, but it doesn't fit in your purse very well when you go to the store. I have a little solution for you. Just got these in. It's called the Little Book of Feet. It's the purse-sized version of the big book. Oh. But it has a spot. Um, purse-sized book. You can put your name in it. And then you can check off which ones you already own. Ah, that's brilliant. So that when you get here... You don't accidentally buy the same foot that you already have a second time. If if paper book is the way to go, this is the way to go for you. Um, Bernina also has an app for keeping track. Um, and it will let you know which feet fit which machines. So I'm more of an app girl myself. So I do have my Bernina loaded. My Berninas. Both of them. They're loaded in my app on my phone. So if I was unsure as to which feed I owned, um, I can check my phone. But I know not everybody is like an app and phone person. Some of us are good old paper copies. So these are available in store. Um, I don't have that many right now. So if we get a lot of interest, we will get some more ordered. But it is called the Little Book of Feet. It's exactly what it's called. They're adorable. So uh, speaking of Bernina feet, uh, there's a Bernina sale started yesterday. Um, it's on a uh, quilting machine. So the, the long arm series machines, uh, cabinets, uh, seven seventies and five seventy QE machines, as well as presser feet. Oh, I don't know if brother has books or apps. Brother's not as organized. We'll have to make one. <laughs> I'll add that to the very long list of to do. Um, the paper one we have in store. The paper book we have in store. Um, Brother doesn't, as far as I know. Um, they have a nice, um, the their like parts and accessories guide on their website. Um, if we get to the right page, is really pretty good for what is available as add-ons for your machine. But there's nothing quite as portable um, with Brother. Best feedback I could give to them though, saying they're they're missing out because you guys would like to know what fits your machine. The nice thing about Brother it comes with almost everything you need. 
So lots of times there's not a huge number of add-ons to be had. A little bit different for both brands. Um, so that's here in store. Uh, lots more fabric is coming out. We have like a giant stack in receiving waiting to come to Facebook and YouTube live before, um, before it hits the show floor. Uh, there's a Bernina sale. Next week we have three classes. Our brother cottage getaway class on Thursday, OESD stitch party class on Wednesday, and a software class on Friday. And the following week, on the 16th and 17th, we have OESD garden party, which is an OESD event. I'm very, very, very excited because um, I get to teach it, and it's so like the projects are so pretty. We'll be done all six projects in the two days in class. The goodie bag with it is in the store. Um, I haven't peeked at it yet, but I'm I'm gonna go do that tomorrow morning. So. Um, we will um, let you guys go for tonight. Those are some of the things going on. Um, we have a new viewers challenge that started. Take a photo of a red and white project out in the wild. So make something that's red and white. Use a red fabric. Um, take a picture of it out in the wild. That's what we would like. Um, whether that's your back deck, go for a walk in the woods, um, go stand in a field, take... A picture of your project in the wild. That's what we're asking for this month for our viewers challenge. So that is a ton of information. If you guys have more questions, tomorrow is Fan Mail Friday and we would love to answer any more questions you have. Today's entire Facebook Live was based on a question from two weeks ago that we're like, I can't talk about this in a five minute segment on Friday. So let's make it a whole, a whole to do. Um, as you can see, I can talk about needles and thread for quite some time. Um, so tomorrow, if you have more questions, uh, we probably won't get any questions sent in tonight in this week's Fan Mail Friday, uh, but we will get them in next week's Fan Mail Friday. So you can email your questions to social at mysewingroom.ca. And that's what I have for you guys today. As usual, if you guys are liking these videos, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, and you want to see more of them, a thumbs up or a like or a heart, uh, is super helpful for us. Let's us know that you're out there and watching. Um, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and s the bell for notifications. And then you'll be notified when we go live, which we do like five days a week. And we figured out how to go live on YouTube on Mondays when we do store tours. Um, on Facebook, hit that follow button on our page that you're watching this on right now. And you'll get um, information about when we go live there. So that's what I have for you guys today.